Do you feel that? Do you smell it in the air? It is E3 season and it is the most exciting time of the year if, if you like video games. Otherwise it's probably like Christmas or your birthday, I don't know. And this year it started early. EA's conference isn't until tomorrow, but we've already had Google Stadia do a conference, which we'll talk about today, as well as Nintendo did a direct with all the Pokemon Sword and Shield information. It's so exciting, I love it. There's just so many things happening right now. So in this video, I want to talk about and cover a lot of things that's happening right now, starting with the rest of my E3 roundup predictions. I'm going to blast through these really quick right at the start here because I do think it's going to be a pretty quiet year this year. I'm only expecting one or two things from like everyone other than Nintendo. Honestly, I think Microsoft might have the craziest conference out of anyone this year, but we'll get to that in a minute. Then I want to talk about some Pokemon Sword and Shield leaks. Now, y'all know me. I don't like talking about leaks and rumors, but I am so hyped up for Pokemon Sword and Shield right now and someone sent me a link on Instagram for these leaks and this happens all the time and it's always so obviously fake so I thought screw it I'll read it I'll see how crazy fake this is gonna be and as I read it I was like you know this actually <laughs> could be pretty legit and I don't know how I feel about actually ruining these things for myself and maybe for you but it's pretty interesting and I, I, I want to talk about it so maybe skip past that one if you don't want any spoilers just in case it ends up being real. Remember in that last Pokemon video, I said, why was that guy walking in from the left? Well, if these leaks are true and they seem like they are, we have an answer to that now and it's very interesting. Then I wanna really quickly talk about Google Stadia because I watched that conference live with all of you and while it wasn't the most edge of my seat, exciting gaming conference I've ever seen, I definitely didn't leave with a negative opinion. The reaction online was just so hateful, calling it trash and that it sucks and that it's ridiculous, that Google's confused. I wasn't gonna talk about Stadia, but I feel like I wanna give my input now that I've seen all of that. And then I'm gonna leave a little bit of mystery news right here at the end. A trailer dropped for a remake of a game I never expected and it's really exciting. So stick around to the end to see that. Wow, this feels really professional. I should do this more. Wait, no, it takes Effort. Never mind. <laughs> And one last time for those that didn't catch it, Saturday during EA's conference, I will be in Houston for a convention called Retro Palooza. I'm just going for the one day, so I won't be able to do EA's. Sorry, I'm gonna miss out on Star Wars. But as soon as I come back that night, the following Sunday, it's gonna be full bore me covering every single thing E3. And I'll still do my follow-up video for what I missed at EA while I was gone. And if you're in Houston or nearby the area, make sure you stop by and say hi. Okay, I'm sorry that took a little bit to explain. Let's start with my E3 predictions for every Oh, it's exciting. In no specific order, and I am powering through these, Bethesda. I, I, I will start with Bethesda. Bethesda's in a really weird state right now. People aren't all that happy with them, especially after the failure that was Fallout 76, and just their business mindset of late. The only things I really expect to see from them is Doom Eternal and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Both those games come out this year, and I really don't expect to see any Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield since they teased those way too early and you could tell. Moving on to EA, here's what I think I'm gonna miss on Saturday. Obviously the new Star Wars that's confirmed. I am very excited for that. And other than that, I don't really have anything to look forward to from EA personally. Microsoft is one that I really have my eye on. In fact, I might be most excited for it because with Nintendo, no, I guess I'm most excited for Nintendo, but I know what to expect from them, which is what I was getting at. Microsoft, it's always a curveball because not only this year are they apparently showing 14 brand new first party exclusive games, which is pretty crazy. If you remember last year, they came out and they announced that they had bought out all of these development studios and they were really making a push at getting back into the gaming industry since they really fell off the last few years. And on top of that, the other reason why Microsoft is so excited is because they don't always have so much of their own stuff to show, they usually get to show the multi-platform stuff. Last year, it's where we got our first look at Cyberpunk. It's always one to have an eye on. Plus, you have Halo 5 getting pretty close, Gears of War 5, an Ori sequel. Speaking of Nintendo, I have already gone through all of Nintendo's in its own video because I have so many expectations, wants, wishes, and dreams. So I'm gonna leave a link for that around for you to go and watch it if you missed it, and please do. Capcom nailed it last year with the Resident Evil 2 remake as well as Devil May Cry 5. Both of those games ended up being really, really great games. 
I am hoping for Resident Evil 3 Remake. I would just like a title card or a glimpse of that being made. Now, I know I'm alone in this, but with Ubisoft, there is this one huge for me game that I have, I, I just, if they don't show it this year, I'm gonna be so ticked off. I mean, oh man, Skull and Bones. Does anyone remember this? <laughs> I can't remember if it was two years ago or three years ago, but Ubisoft showed off this really awesome looking pirate ship battling on the seven seas with a huge open world multiplayer. It just seems so insane. Pirate ship battle game thing. It just looked epic. I was really excited. This was before even Sea of Thieves was announced and I got kind of a pirate fix through that game. But then since then, that has been completely dead. I really hope that game... <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that game. But knowing Ubisoft, I expect them to show off maybe a brand new IP, maybe a couple of brand new IPs. They're always working on something. Uh, apparently, Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been confirmed that it won't be there and it will have its separate live stream this week. So that's exciting. For a lot of people, they might end up taking home the entire weekend because they do have this brand new Avengers game they've been working on and hyping up and it feels like it's going to be epic. And then, of course, Final Fantasy 7, which honestly, I'm so sick of hearing about and I just wish it was out already. And then a new thing called Outriders, which no one seems to know what that is yet. Activision and Blizzard, I I don't know, man. Maybe some Sekiro DLC? Um, yeah, that's just about it. What do you guys think, though? Let me know down below what you're expecting to see and what I missed, because I rushed through it and I definitely missed a lot of stuff. Now, as I said, I hate rumors, I hate leaks, so if you don't want anything ruined from the new Pokemon games, I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to click to the next thing I'm talking about in this video, but if you're just a little bit interested, like I am, I've already read these and I just want to talk about them. So if you're a leak or rumor kind of guy or gal, let's let's just do it. Now the reason why this looks like it's true is because it was actually posted two weeks ago and half of it ended up being in that direct we just watched. So we can probably effectively assume the other half is also true. We just haven't been told about it yet. So here's some stuff that stuck out to me. Eternatus, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is the evil legendary. The other legendary will be a wolf who will either have a shield main or hold a sword like the Great Wolf Sif. So you know how when I reacted, I said they seem to get like up on their hind legs and, and ready to fight something, some kind of evil that was wisping up the wind? Well, it sounds like there's another, as I said, evil legendary called Eternatus. That's exciting. So he predicted Dynamaxing, which we learned in the direct, but there's actually another maxing that we weren't told about, and that's gig Gigant to maxing. I don't know. Gigant, Gigantamaxing maybe? And that's actually different from Dynamax as it changes what the Pokemon looks like. Like Meowth becomes a really long cat. Lapras gets layers like musical bars to its shell and musical notes. Pikachu looks like a retro fat Pikachu. What buddy? All right, fine, come here. Jeez. Ah, it made me drop my phone now. This is this can't become a normal thing, man. There's a bunch more. I'll leave links down below, but here's one that actually answered a question that I had about the multiplayer aspect. While there is a transit system, you'll have to go through the wild area at times, an open world biome that has a weather system and little pockets where wild Pokemon Dynamax and have to be beaten in a four-person raid. I mean, again, he predicted that two weeks early. You will randomly see nearby players and interact with them to get their league cards and items. So that answered a question. When you're near those Pokestop kind of things, you will see players randomly pop up. That's why it looked like that guy was walking in from the left. So it's not a full open world experience with your friends. It's most likely random players that just pop up when you're in certain areas. However, it's a step in the right direction and it's getting close and it does make that entire wild area feel more alive. And while it's pretty simple this generation around, maybe future generations can expand on this. Again, I don't want to go through all of these. I just found them really interesting, especially that one that answered my question that I had. So I'll leave links down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Again, take it with a pinch of salt, but he didn't really say anything that crazy crazy and most of it most of what he wrote like 80 percent ended up being in that direct so the other 20 percent it's not that insane to think that that's all true but again until nintendo announces it you never know let's talk about google stadia <laughs> to start with yes i pre-ordered the founders pack the 129 get the controller the weird dongle and then three months and destiny 2 apparently let me start this by saying if i wasn't a game critic if i didn't do this for a living a career if it wasn't my 
my job to talk about this stuff in videos, no, I wouldn't have bought it. If I was a general consumer, I wouldn't have picked it up. Not because I think it looks awful or bad or not worth it or anything like that, but because I have a PlayStation 4, I have an Xbox One, I have a Switch, I have every console back through the NES, I have all of these games sat behind me. I'm good. Like, I don't need something like this. It's I am not its target demographic. So I bought this as part of my job, and it doesn't have a use to me outside of that. However, again, I wasn't unimpressed by the product itself. And I do think it has a purpose for some people. The thing that impressed me was the internet speeds you actually need to run this thing. 35 down, and you can do 4K, 60 frames, HDR, 5.1 surround sound. That is really good. Like that is that is just really good. I know not everyone has 35. When I initially moved into this house, I initially contacted AT&T, I think, and the best they could give me was 10 down. Shop around, people. I laughed out loud at that, and then I went to Spectrum, and they gave me 500 down with no data cap. So I can run this thing about 10 times over, no issues. And even if you only have speeds of 10 down, you can still get this and run it at 1080, which is the service they provide for free. So you don't even have to pay for it anyway at that point. And 10 down, I mean, if you have speeds lower than 10 down, you have bigger issues than not being able to play Google Stadia. So all of that honestly impressed me. The speeds impressed me. Apparently it chews through your data like no tomorrow. So if you don't have unlimited, then I think you're in trouble. But again, unlimited data isn't exactly unheard of. I've had unlimited data both here in the States and in Australia when I lived there for like the past seven or eight years. I can't imagine this point not having unlimited. Like even just being a current day gamer and having to install like hundreds gigabyte updates for things like Gears of War 4 or Red Dead Redemption 2 every other day. Just all of that data I have in gaming, let alone the amount of YouTube data I have in a day. Netflix, Hulu, like if I didn't have unlimited in general, I couldn't live my lifestyle. But I do completely understand that in some areas you can't get that unlimited, in some areas you can't get those speeds, and Google Stadia just ain't for you. This isn't a product that's for everyone. Nintendo Switch, now that's a product that's marketed towards everyone. Google Stadia, it has its very select demographic at this point and if you don't fall in it it's going to seem unnecessary and stupid but that doesn't mean it is unnecessary and stupid it's just unnecessary and stupid for you here's the thing I got wrong it's ten dollars a month I thought that meant oh like Netflix you can play all these games I'm an idiot I'm dumb no you still have to buy the games on top of that and that upset a lot of people why am I paying for a subscription but still having to buy all these games because games aren't cheap and it's not really Google Stadia's place to put these games on their platform and then tell Ubisoft, oh, and by the way, you're not making any money off those sales because people already pay for our servers. Haha, <laughs> GG, no re. Kind of sadly doesn't work like that the same way it works with movies and Netflix. Games cost so much to make that they that most developers these days swear that even selling them at $60 is a loss. And that's why microtransactions are so insane these days. I don't know the merit behind that, but that's what most people agree on at this point. So Google can't really take all these games, put them on their server, and then just sell them for free. That's not how it works, and it's actually why Game Pass isn't really a great platform to have your game on if you're a developer. Developers that have their game on Game Pass make pennies to the dollar on those games. If you'll notice any big budget games to go to Game Pass, it's usually ones that bomb and don't do that well. Tomb Raider, it didn't do that well. Life is Strange, it didn't do that well. Just Cause 4, it didn't do that well. So all those games ended up being thrown on Game Pass so they can at least make some pennies on it, but a game like Red Dead Redemption 2 that is going to sell 60 bucks no no matter what, they're not going anywhere near Game Pass because they won't make money off that. So it sucks. So it does, yeah, it sucks you have to buy the games. We haven't seen the prices of the games. Hopefully they won't sell them for full price. Hopefully they'll do some kind of crazy deals. But even if they do, remember it's a product that doesn't require you to buy a console. So right off the bat, if you don't have a PlayStation 4, you don't have an Xbox, if your PC kind of sucks, you don't have to invest in that $400 console to start playing. So its value is dependent on who you are. Now the state of your event kind of did feel like a mess while it was happening, but they'd never really done one before. And they have this product that is this wireless streaming online with no console. Like it's really hard to explain. You know how people got really confused about what the Wii U was and the Wii was? Now imagine having to try and explain no console to someone like that. So I could tell that Google was trying to walk that line between 
constantly reminding and explaining what it actually is and then also showing the people that understood what it was the rest of it and it kind of led to a very slow paced confusing event even after the amount of times they tried to explain everything even I still walked away thinking that I pay ten dollars a month and I got all the games dumb so yeah the event was choppy but they did show some pretty cool games I like that quirky gang beast mixed with overcooked style game that looked like a lot of fun to play in couch co-op Baldur's Gate 3 was a big surprise and I, hey, even if this ends up all failing and bombing, at least we got a new Baldur's Gate out of it. They paid to have their team double production and make a third game. That's pretty cool. And I didn't really see any games that specifically spoke to me, but you gotta, you gotta remember this is a console launch in a way. Like, think of any other console launch we've ever had. What do you get? Like seven, eight games? But Google Stadia is bringing 20 games to the plate here. And again, it's just, it's weird because it's a console launch without the console. At least on the console launches, you can get excited for the new hardware. But this is launching without that, so there's almost nothing to be excited for. Maybe they should have waited until Baldur's Gate was ready so they could throw that on day one and have an exclusive on launch, which is what most systems do, and it is what they're missing. But you can tell they're trying to get in early before the next generations of systems come in, so kind of a win-lose situation, I guess. And this is my final point I will make in defending it, and it also is the main thing that I guess is wrong with it. It's just a little early. This whole concept, I do believe, is eventually going to be the future of gaming. Movies, music, TV shows, all of that has gone to streaming. It, like, it seems ludicrous to me, and I'm sure so many of you, that one day, like 10, 20 years from now, we won't be buying physical games, we'll just start playing them like that and streaming them, and it'll be, it'll be a perfect service, hopefully. But I mean, if you took me 10, 15 years in the past and told me that I wouldn't be buying music CDs anymore, which I loved, DVDs, all of that, and one day I would just be paying 10 bucks a month and I could stream all of it, that would seem ridiculous to me too. And I mean, you you can make the same argument that I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm just paying for a subscription and I, if I just bought the CDs over a period of time, I would have all the music I'm streaming, but I, I would actually have it and it's like, yeah, but who wants to do that? <laughs> and while I think that this whole game streaming thing is a little early because not everyone has the net speed for it, not everyone has unlimited data, this is just a lot right now. At the same time, it's not as early as you might think if you actually consider how close we are to the digital age of gaming in general. We are moving away from physical, I'm not, but a lot of people are. Game stores like GameStop are in jeopardy of closing down because their sales are getting less and less. And people are just moving towards downloading digital games. In fact, a lot of games aren't even getting physical releases anymore in general. And then you think about actually buying a physical game like an Xbox One game. What do you do when you come home? You probably have to download a 50 gig patch. You have to install the game to your Xbox. Like the whole method of getting these things physical is just getting so redundant other than just wanting to own something. You're still effectively owning a digital copy and you have to mess with all this waiting and downloading and all this crap and taking up your hard drive and people complaining about hard drives being too small because you can't fit more than 10 games onto it. Well, you know what solves all of these issues? Google Stadia. <laughs> Which is kind of why it's here. Does it feel too early? Yes, it absolutely does. Is it going to succeed? I don't know. In fact, I'm leaning towards Stadia, the product that is Stadia itself, probably failing. But eventually, 10 years from now, a service just like Stadia, I could see that being the norm. And once it becomes more popular and you have, you know, Xbox is doing it, Sony's doing it, Nintendo's doing it alongside Google and everyone's streaming, that's when prices start getting more competitive. Or it'll be bundled in. I mean, we already pay like 10 bucks a month for PlayStation Network. What if 10 years from now, that 10 bucks plus inflation of money just includes the right to stream the games as well? We're just not there yet. They're doing it first. They're leading the way. It's just not where it needs to be yet. And so I'm excited and interested to try it out. But at the same time, I don't expect to use it past the first however long I put into Destiny 2. Just is what it is. If it's not for you, don't get it. It's free for 1080p. Try it out. Like, what is the big deal? I personally, I don't see it. And the last little secret piece of news I've been hiding is the SpongeBob Rehydrated trailer. Yeah, so I was gonna talk about this a little bit more in detail, but it's just a 20 second trailer and this video is already 20 minutes long. So uh, I'm just gonna cut that all out and just say, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Glad they're doing it. All right, bye. <sighs> but I'd love to know your thoughts on any or all of this. What did you think of my E3 predictions? Do you have any of your own that you'd like to throw in? What did you think of the Stadia talk? Am I completely off base here? Everyone has their own opinion. 
You can leave yours down below. Just be nice. And remember, it's opinions. Man, the amount of people that were salty at me for my opinions on ranking my favorite Switch games. They're my favorite ones. They're not supposed to be yours. Leave yours down below. The heck, man. And the Pokemon leaks and rumors. What do you think about those? And what do you just think about the Pokemon stuff in general? Hopefully, I'll see a lot of you tomorrow in Houston, Texas. And if not, I'll see the rest of you online on Sunday when I start streaming E3. I don't have a good way to end this video.